It matters what you want to do because they've become smarter these days. Passion, impact, and leadership. So where does that leave you? Namaste everyone, this is Avanti, and today we are going to talk about very highly requested extracurriculars. So you must have heard of Chintu, who has done his National Olympiads and got into XYZ Ivy League College, or you might have heard of Mintu, who was a professional basketball player, or you might have heard of Gitu, who got 2400 on her SATs, or you might have heard of 10,000 different people who have done 10,000 different things. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter what Jindu, Mintu, Gitu, Ritu have done. It matters what you want to do and what makes you unique and the person that you are. And so we're going to talk about that and you'll see exactly what I mean. The biggest trap that people fall into is thinking that you have to do XYZ things to get into your dream college. Maybe it'll help, but if you do something just to get into college, you're going to feel dishonest to yourself and it's not going to help you in the long run and it's not even going to help you for the college because they've become smarter these days. Instead of thinking about a college project you need to do to get into college, think of college as a stepping stone to the rest of your life. If you do things that genuinely make you happy, that you're genuinely passionate about and that you want to explore, and college becomes one stop along that general destination of life, you will be much happier and the meaningful work that you do will be so much better. Trust me. So here's the deal. Colleges don't care what you do. They instead care why you do what you do. Because if you think about it, the only thing that tells them about who you are as a human is what you do outside of school or what you do that's not related to your grades or any of the other parts of the application. The thing is, US colleges, and I've seen increasingly colleges in India like in Ashoka and other places are starting to care about you as the holistic human person because you're not a robot. You're not just a student who's meant to output grades. That's not your function in this world. You are a living, breathing human being who enjoys doing probably multiple things. And the idea is to celebrate that part of who you are. So when they care about why you do what you do, what they care about is three primary things. They care about your passion. What is it that you care about in this world? What are you passionate about? What is it that you're spending your time doing when you're not in school? Number two, they care about impact. And impact doesn't mean that you have to cure cancer or you know save 10,000 lives. Impact means, are you impacting someone's life? They care about initiative. Are you taking initiative in your community, in your school, in your home? What does that look like? And I'll give you tangible examples, but they generally care about passion, impact, and they also care about leadership because at the end of the day, whatever it is you love to do, have you taken it to the highest level possible? And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to do something at a national level. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to, you know, be an award winning, whatever. It just means whatever you care about, how have you taken it to the highest level possible with the resources available to you? And let's talk a little bit more about that. Remember this, college doesn't make you who you are. Just because you go to a fancy school, just because I went to Harvard doesn't mean that I'm suddenly some cool person. It just doesn't. It just means I have this knowledge which I'm sharing with you now, those of you who are aspiring. But what these colleges do when they make their selections for people, they select people they think will be successful or interesting already. So whether or not they go to that institution or not, they select the kinds of people who they think will be successful in life. So it's not any magic. Of course, you'll learn and you'll grow as a person by going to any institution and any experience in life. But Harvard doesn't make you the person you are. XYZ College doesn't make you the person you are. You are the person you are. And these are all just learning and growing experiences. On the flip side, if you don't get into one of these colleges, that doesn't suddenly mean that you won't be successful in life because you have the power to shape your destiny even more than you can think. And a lot of that comes from the things you meaningfully engage with means extracurriculars. The definition of extracurricular is quite literally extra to curricular. What is it that you do that's outside of your curriculum, that's outside of the syllabus that you have handed to you? And that is what makes you the person you are. Whether that means you spend your time doing an artistic activity, helping out a friend, um, working on something fun, playing video games, that's all extracurriculars. Now, when it comes to college, it's all about how you talk about what you enjoy doing. 
So the other big trap that we fall into is the numbers trap. We think I should be doing 20 things and that will maximize my chances. No, because it's A, not humanly possible to do 20 things well, and B, it's so much more meaningful for college and for life for you to do three or four things well than to do 10,000 things at a very, very mediocre level. Colleges don't really care about the participation certificate. If something you participated in had an impact on you and your life, no matter what it is, whether you did well or not, that's interesting to them. But they don't care that you participated in 20 competitions or 20 exams because that's not saying anything about you beyond the fact that you just tried your hand at a bunch of things. What is it that makes you tick? What is it that makes you a unique individual? And what is it that makes you? So I'll give you my example, hopefully that'll be useful. So if I'm honest with you, I did a lot of things in high school, but my application did not include all of those things. Or if it did, it just grouped things together. Because if I tried to list every single thing that I'd done, I would come across either as a crazy person or someone who doesn't have any direction. They want to feel like you have a sense of control over your life and a sense of direction and that you do things you genuinely care about. So in my case, the two things that I really genuinely cared about were music and global health. And let me explain what I mean. You'll know that I love music and I've been doing music for a long, long time, but it wasn't just the fact that I was learning. I'd learned in different styles and trained. How did I take music to the next level? These are a few examples for me, what I did, right? So obviously in my case, I trained in any classical music and I had a little bit of that background. I did every single opportunity possible when it came to music in school. I did all these school competitions, school things, and that actually led me to do some professional theater. And that led me to do some other professional concerts and things like that. I'm not saying you have to be a professional in any artistic field, but it's not enough to just say that you learned something. What have you done with it? Have you shared it with other people? Have you been able to impact somebody by it? Do you do it in a large extent? Like if your school offers, if they have a play, are you part of the play? Are you part of these things? So that's what matters. How are you taking all the opportunities at your disposal and maximizing them? So for me, it meant being a performing artist in the truest sense and taking that to you know a semi-professional level. The other thing I care deeply about is health, healthy populations, global health, education, social impact generally. So my focus was that, and there's a few reasons. If you've seen my video on my Harvard essay, you will know that I've had a lot of health issues myself, and I consider myself lucky to have had access to care. Second is all my grandparents were doctors, so I grew up around that. And for me, I think that we can make meaningful impact if you have a healthy population, you have a productive, surviving population. And for me, that was something I genuinely cared about. So what I did in those areas was I started creating initiatives in those areas. I'll give you an example. For a school project, I was reading about organ donation and organ trade, and I realized that the rate of organ donation in India is actually extremely low in comparison to other countries. I became fascinated by that and kind of obsessed, so I started researching. I researched who the organ donation bodies are in India, I started contacting them. I contacted some global ones as well, and I did a small research project essentially understanding the attitudes towards organ donation. That I did when I was in my early teens, you know, 13, 14, it was just gen something I genuinely had curiosity for at that time, I wasn't even thinking of this might be useful for college. It's it's something I genuinely care about today and I think, you know, the beauty of being an organ donor is anybody can be one. You just need to register and it's important to talk about it. Talk about them in a separate video if you want. The other thing I did, again, super by chance, I was going for a doctor's visit and I saw in the next room that they were teaching CPR and first aid. And I saw them do CPR and I was like, this is so interesting, this is really cool. So I went up to the doctor and I said, hey, can I learn? And they said, um, we don't really teach random people, but why not? And so I learned it. I realized how easy it was. I also realized how important it was. I personally think that it's really important, especially for a youth population to know basics like first aid, CPR, to talk about things like mental health, to care about things that they can take in their control when it comes to their health. So I started a campaign called YCPR, Why Standing for Youth or the question why and ran a couple pilots, so at my school first, and then we did a few schools in Mumbai, and built a team. And essentially, it was very simple. I partnered with a few hospitals, and we taught kids CPR. 
And that was really important to me because again, I feel like when the youth cares about something, there's immense power and immense change behind that. And in that vein, I did multiple other things in health. But again, they were all at random times. I wasn't thinking that this is a college project. These are things that I genuinely still care about today, genuinely still do work in today. And I'm so happy that I set the foundation for them, you know, 10 years ago, six years ago, five years ago, because now I'm so much more knowledgeable and can take them forward. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I'm really passionate about music and I find purpose from creating change in health or having these conversations around health, education, social impact. How do I combine the two? So I did that in two ways. The first being any money that I earned as a performing artist, I used that to seed fund these campaigns. So instead of taking money from my parents or instead of you know raising money, which I could have also done, I decided to wrap that money into this so I would have the ability to really combine those two areas that I cared about. The second thing was I also have had a lot of experience with friends and family members who've dealt with cancer and who dealt with chronic pain. So I used to do some form of music therapy at hospitals close by to where I lived. It was very simple. All we did was, you know, we'd go in and you'd exchange the joys of music and art. And that was something that I've been doing from a very young age. Ever since I was five, I um, would donate my hair. I would grow it out, chop it off and donate my hair to a cancer society and been doing a lot of music related things since that age. At age five, no one's thinking college. I was thinking more so from a place of how do I combine these things I care about and how do I feel like I'm having some tiny form of impact in this world. So that was my motivation and so that was really the bulk of what I would say my primary extracurriculars were, you know, things to do with music and the performing arts and things to do with health or global health generally. In addition to that, I did Model UN debates, elocution, science fair. I played, I was throwball captain. I was editor in chief of the school newspaper. I had seven positions in school. There were all these things, but understand if I just listed everything out, it would feel like I'm diluting the things I care about deeply. So I combine things. I combine mun, debate, elocution, all of that into one bucket as to the way in which I like to communicate with the world. I combine, you know, I talked about the newspaper and other things with relation to that as well. In fact, so my essay is my main essay is online, so you can watch it in my other video. My supplementary essay was more deep into the work that I've done in the health space. And my extracurricular essay, instead of being on music or this, was actually about throwball because I loved playing throwball. It was one of the most fun things I ever did. And it's something I did just for me. I didn't do it for anybody else. You know, I no longer play it in the same way um, because you know, didn't have it, tried starting a throwball club at Harvard, but that's another story. Um, but yeah, it was just something that was fun to me and I talked about the lessons I learned from it and it makes a huge difference. I remember when I met my admissions officer, what she said was the strength of your application was how you talked about the things that you did, how you genuinely, you know, it, it came through that you care for your community or passionate about things and want to make a change in this world and the way in which people spoke about those you know she basically like what she was saying is that you sounded like an interesting person and other people back that up if i had just led with oh i got almost perfect scores in my sat oh i got like 95 blah, blah, blah that's great but so did a lot of other students apply you know um and the point of the extracurriculars is to show what makes you a unique person so i hope just me sharing a little bit of mine was useful um, in the actual application when you have the 10 slots, you don't have to fill out all 10. I think I filled out about 9 or 10, but you don't have to. Some of the most successful applications have 3 or 4, but again, they have to be supremely, supremely meaningful. I, you know, did this other service work in relation to whether it's the music therapy thing or I used to coordinate this program. And I talked about it, but again, I talked about it all together. I didn't say, this is what I did, and this, and this, and this, because then it just sounds like you're the jack of all trades, you know? Even when I got my recommendations, I made sure that there were teachers who could speak to some of the leadership I showed in school, but there were people who could speak to the leadership I showed outside of school, to my passion for music, to the work that I'd done, and having a holistic sense of that, because the real point of extracurriculars is who you are as a person and what makes you interesting. Here's the thing, when colleges are choosing people, they are looking to populate their programs. What do I mean by that? 
I mean that they are not looking to have a thousand of the same people. Otherwise, they would take a thousand people who scored 1600 on their SATs. They would take a thousand tuba players. But clearly, that's obviously not possible. So they're going to take people that they think forms a diverse class. And that's where a lot of luck is involved. You know, there happen to be, I don't know, 50 people who are interested in music applying at the same time. Maybe they'll take only a few of them and, you know, a lot of luck is involved. So you never know. But if you are genuine to who you are and you are genuine to showing that, it'll make a huge difference. Trust me. If someone were to describe me when I applied, they would have li literally, if they had to put a two-liner about who I was, they probably would have said, performing artist who's passionate about global health and youth and, um, you know, show strong leadership or something like that. But that statement is true today, several years later after I graduated college, because it was authentic to who I am, who I was then, and who I've grown into be. None of those things are untrue anymore. Those things still hold merit, they still hold weight, and they're still things I care about. So the basic premise is do what you love and figure out a way to take that to the highest level and talk about it. How do you package it, you know, for lack of a better word, when you're talking and showing it to these colleges. So where does that leave you? You who are watching this video who might be really confused as to how to showcase what you do and also what you should do if you're early on. You should figure out what it is you really enjoy. And it's hard. It's hard to find that process. I'll make a separate video about passion. But start by brainstorming. What are the things you spend time on when you're not studying? Are you spending time playing video games? Great. Why? Is it a stress buster? Do you like playing with friends? Do you like the actual design of the game? Do you like building community? Is there something you can do around that? Do you like cooking? Is it something that you enjoy? Do you enjoy, are you a foodie? Do you enjoy experimenting with things? Do you like making your own recipes? Do you want to make a cookbook eventually? You know, there's all these different things and trust me, you'll find what that is for yourself. With sports, if you play at a national level, they also recruit for sports at some schools. So check that out. Uh, from India, they usually often only recruit for squash or swimming or, you know, some of those select sports, but just check out the sports and understand the recruitment process for that. And let's say you don't do any of these things because you don't have the opportunity to be exposed to dancing or drawing or art or any of these things. That's fine. Are you someone who cares passionately about science and do you like researching the world? Do you want to do something in research? Do you want to understand a phenomenon? That's great. That's something you're doing outside of school. That's an extracurricular. Are you somebody who has to spend time taking care of somebody, like a grandfather or grandmother at home? Do you spend a lot of time being a caretaker for somebody? That's something you're doing outside of school. And that's something you can talk about in the lessons you've learned and demonstrate depth through that. Whatever it is, I promise you can find a way to talk about it. But more than talk about it, assess what it is that you're doing, what you care about, and how can you take it to the next level? How can you create impact with it? How can you demonstrate your passion with it? How can you show leadership with it? And trust me, hopefully you get into a good college because it's a whole holistic process, right? There's grades and blah, 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 blah. But more than that, hopefully you are a wonderful human being who, regardless of the college, is gonna make an impact on this world. And that's how I would really, really, really encourage you to think of it because that to me makes all the difference. So if you have any other questions about extracurriculars, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. And um, if you want me to make a video on how to find your passion, how to brainstorm these things, let me know if this video reaches 2000 likes. I will get to doing that. So thank you so, so much for watching. I hope this was helpful. It's sending you all a big, big, big hug and I hope you're doing great. Have a great day.